Hello folks, Shin Tiger Curl here, that dude in the straw hat, bringing you yet another wrestling review. I'm of course joined by my faithful cohort and fellow in there superstar, Joe. Say hi, Joe. He had pizza today. Well, it's Sunday night, you know what that means. Time for some pay-per-view wrestling. And which pay-per-view, you might ask? TNA's Bound for Glory, their Wrestlemania in a way. And this also marks a milestone as this will be my final TNA imp TNA review for a while. If you haven't noticed, if as I said many, many weeks ago, I was planning to join the WrestleCast um, TNA boycott on Bound for Glory weekend. Now, this will be my final TNA review. After this, don't expect any more until TNA cleans up its act. So, it's Bound for Glory, their biggest show of the year. Who will it will it somehow outdo last year's apocalypse of suck that was t was bound for glory 2010 or will it or will it actually be good I got my notes let's get started um quick note I missed the um the tag team title match between ink ink and Mexican America because it came on um it was served on free for Facebook and I'm, I, I I wasn't on Facebook at the time, so there's that. But from what I understand, it wasn't a very good match, and Mexican America won, so there's that. Anyway, our first pay per view match pits Brian Don't Call Me Spanky Kendrick versus Austin Aries, the greatest man who ever lived, in for the X Division strap. Now, this was actually um, Spanky's a better match than I, than I thought he could pull off. He was actually pulling in some good offense and was very resilient. Uh, but A Double was really working this match. I mean, the fans were clearly rooting for him over the this the, the weird hobo Jedi mind Yoda, whatever the fuck you want to call him, Spanky's doing. Needless to say, A Double retains. Why not? Greatest man who ever lived. Next up, RVD versus Jerry Lynn, Full Metal Mayhem. This was a so-so match for me. Um, this would have been an interesting match 10 years ago, but it's clear these guys are going up there in age. They really can't do these matches, kinds of matches anymore, especially Jerry Lynn. Not to demean their talent in the ring right now, but doing this kind of match just doesn't just, just doesn't jive with either of them now. There were a lot of good, nice spots. We had a, um, a, a Van Daminator, I mean a Van Terminator, with a chair and a ladder, so there's that. Um, and we, we saw the usage of a lot of ladders, and it was in a lot of brutal spots. But in the end, it was RVD that got over. I would have preferred Jerry Lynn, but hey, I don't really care. Next up, Joe versus Crimson versus Matt Morgan, triple threat match. Now Matt, Matt's the only one I'm rooting for in this match because, well, Crimson's streak is crap, and Joe hasn't won a match to save his life in the past eight months, so. But overall, this was the only one. Joe was the most over person in this match. The fans were clearly for him, and he was on top of his game tonight. Uh, Matt Morgan was also there. He actually flew off the top rope out to the ring below. Rare for the big six footer. And Crimson. Well, Crimson was just there. The end comes when. Um, uh, let's. What was it? Um, Joe. I mean. Uh, uh, Matt Morgan goes for the carbon footprint, misses, and eats a pathetic spear from Crimson. One, two, three. Crimson wins. Uh, this was a god. This was a bad match, especially since Crimson won it in such a fucked up way. You're undefeated, man, you ladies and gentlemen. Next up, Bully Ray versus Mr. Anderson. Falls count anywhere match. Before the match. Bully Ray cuts a small promo about how he's been pretty much ass raping the fans of Philadelphia for years. Quote, ending with, um, my name is Bully Ray, I'm from New York City. The match was probably the best match on the card. These two guys really took advantage of the Falls Count Anywhere stipulation. At one point, they even both cut a small little promo bit where um, Bully uses gets uh, Mr. Anderson's mic and says, from the Red Hook section of Brooklyn! And then Mr. Anderson takes the mic and he says, You're not in New York City. 
This is Philadelphia, bitch! And lays him out. This was a brutal, brutal matchup. These two guys beat the hell out of each other with whatever the end, whatever they could. And it just seemed like neither of them could actually get over on the other. It was a very even, very physical contest. But in the end, it was a mic check through a goddamn table that gained the win for Mr. Anderson. Blood coming out of his nose. Kudos to you, Mr. Anderson and Bully Ray. You made my night. Next up, Fatal 4-Way Match. Velvet Sky, Madison Rain, Mickey James, and Winter for the Knockouts Championship with Karen Jarrett, special guest referee. Yep, and apparently she and Madison Rain are in cahoots or whatever you want to say. Uh, this match was... It was average and toward, towards the end when there was a whole bunch of shenanigans involving some green mist and then Miss Miss Brooks coming out there and but anyway Velvet Sky wins getting her first knockouts title I'm happy for Velvet Sky I just hate the way that this whole match went down it was too convoluted too much shenanigans and way overbooked plus it has Karen Jarrett in it that instantly brings down any match next up AJ Styles versus Christopher Daniels I quit match. This, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but this was a bad match for these two. The pace was so slow that it was borderline boring. The, it was, the, the psychology was all mixed up and awkward. Uh, I know Christopher Daniels tried to go for a whole threatening, to be threatening, but he came off as more weird than anything else. I don't know why. He just didn't come off as threatening. The end, which was pretty much anticlimactic, comes when AJ gets some offense in and then takes out a steel spike and go, approaches um, a Christopher Daniels to spike him in the face. Chris Daniels then promptly gives up, saying, I quit. AJ wins. It's a sad night when a Bully Ray Mr. Anderson match is better than an AJ Styles uh, Christopher Daniels match. Uh, AJ gets attacked by the, on the ramp by AJ by by Daniels, while Daniels was talking about how he won the match. You said I quit, you dumb mascara wearing bitch. Ugh. Next up, Jeff Jarrett hits the ring and calls out Jeff Hardy. A fight ensues. Nobody gives a shit. This was an entirely pointless segment. The only part of it I did like is when the crowd was chanting. D-Lo, D-Lo. Don't fuck with the brown. Next up, the match no one wanted to see. The match no one cared to see. And in that, in that match, no one, everyone will try not to remember. It's Hulk Hogan versus Sting with the fate of the company with Dixie Carter outside the ring. Before the match, when the match starts, Hogan calls in Ric Flair. And this was the worst fucking match I've ever seen. I mean, it was slow. It was prodding. Both of these guys are well past their prime to do much of anything. The moves were so simple. Uh, a guy, a guy like Mike Bennett would look greater and better than these guys right now. It, it's just they were just. I just didn't like it. It was bad. I mean. It was Hogan versus Warrior 2 bad. Ugh. This was just terrible. I mean, what more can you say? It's Hogan versus Sting. But anyway, uh, before the match, Jackson James, uh, Eric Bischoff's son, talked to his father, and he wanted, and his father wanted him to make sure that Hogan won. Go back into the ring. Uh, Sting locks in the Scorpion Deathlock. Hogan taps. Sting wins. Dixie Carter gets her company back. Who gives a fuck? Then Immortal hits the ring and starts beating the piss out of Sting. Sting begs Hogan to help him. And because of this, and the cheers of the crowd, Hogan turns face. And together, Sting and Hogan beat the crap out of Immortal. Well, congratulations, Nexus. You're no longer the weakest um, and most pathetic... Uh, stable out there, or you were. 
Because while you got beat up by John Cena, single-handedly, it's okay, it's understandable, he's Super Cena. Immortal got beat up by two old guys. Yeah. So, this, the match, plus this ending, where I have to say is the worst match in TNA history. And one of the worst in professional wrestling history. Next up, main event. Bobby Roode, Kurt Angle. World title match. Um, it should be noted that Kurt Angle um, has a has a knee heavily bandaged and he was injured. I don't know how, but he was injured. But still, they put on an excellent, excellent match. Seeing the seeing the cross face counted into the into the ankle lock, then recounted into the cross face was a was a great exchange. Um, Bobby Roode is really taking the cross face and made it his own move. There you go. But in the end. Kurt Angle retains. Love the match, hated the ending. They could, they should have given it to Bobby Roode. Yeah, and that's Bound for Glory. My thoughts: This was a bad one. Not bad, like not bad as last year's, but still pretty bad. The matches were, t some of the matches were terrible. The only two, there was only one good one where I liked the entire thing was Anderson versus um, Bully Ray. There, a lot of the matches had too many shenanigans. Some I just didn't ca even care about. Sting and Hogan, there you go. And now it's time for the D Cell Battery Award. And the, this award goes to who else? Sting versus Hogan. That match should not have taken place. And another D cell battery for the TNA fans who liked it. You're nothing but sheep, TNA fans. Fucking sheep. Well, I don't have to worry about this because, as I've said, this, is the, this will be the last time you talk, that you'll be seeing me talk about TNA for a while. So, until TNA cleans up its act, most. Like most likely disband Immortal, get, get make um, Eric Young serious again, rebuild the tag team division, and um, get rid of Hogan and Bischoff. While you're at it, I will not be doing any more impacts. I will not be talking about TNA. I will not be discussing TNA or anything at all. So I will be spending my Thursday nights talking with a special young lady named Bella, who is most likely watching this. So anyway, there's that. So that's my, imp my final impact, my final TNA review until TNA cleans up its act. So tune in tomorrow for WWE Raw. It is the f next it is the second Raw of the Johnny Ace era. And what the hell's going to go down now? Well, you just have to tune in and find out. So this so this is Shin Tiger Curl, that dude in the straw hat, and Joe saying good night and eat a dick TNA. Bye-bye.